because that you're very lucky that I'm not going to do three streams, although I might. I have been informed that there is a um, slight problem with my microphone. I have listened to the uh, replay, to the recording, and I do hear that there is some background noise. Uh, it, I don't think it's enough to actually um, to actually screw up um, to screw up. Wow, I just brought up a window. Um, yeah, I don't think it's enough to actually screw up the uh, your ability to listen to this, hopefully. And at some point, I might even get uh, voice to text. Um, so, unless it's absolutely unbearable, I'm going to have to ask you guys to sort of live with it. Sorry. Okay. Um, now, what I was excited about doing and probably should have done earlier is in index.html, we're running a lot of stuff right now, and uh, it is testing. Um, but of course, right now we're having some problems with the buffer function and testing all these things at the same time in a buffer function with um, trying to test the buffer function, a little bit ugly. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a new file called index2.html, which is doesn't really the name doesn't really matter here. But what we're going to do is we're going to take all of index.html, copy it into index2.html, so we have a safe. And now in index.html, we're going to sort of trim this down to just the stuff we need. So we still need all the libraries. Um, we do not need the buttons. We will need the div ID for we will need a div tag for the for the map itself. Uh, nodes, dots, guideline, br, lat, all this stuff we will not need. We won't need to pull data from overpass right now. We won't need to go through this sort of little jiggly thing to get data from a URL because of asynchronicity. Um, and this is, of course, the stuff that uh, that handles the data from overpass, which we won't need either. So if I have done this correctly, uh, let's see. Okay. Okay, so now we still do need the map. Uh, we can set the map view to 0, 0, 0, which is kind of where we want it to be. Uh, we do not need the L tile layer. We don't need to add that to the map. We do not need uh, this tile layer. We will uh, map zoom. We don't need to set that to 13. Obviously, we don't need any of the commented code. We don't need to draw a rectangle. Let's go ahead and get all that. Uh, we do need, however, to update the view because um, when we move the map or uh, zoom in on the map, we do want to redraw the buffer tiles. Uh, and give me one second here to sort of preview what I'm doing just to make sure I haven't uh, gone totally nuts. This is going to cause an echo in the stream, but I want to make sure I'm at least uh, being heard in the stream. But I want to make sure I'm at least... Okay, I was. Um, so now what we want to do, map set view, okay, console buttons, we don't need the buttons. We don't need to add listeners to the buttons. Uh, view controller, I don't even think we need, yes, we don't need a view controller here because the only thing we're really going to be doing is update view. And an update view, we still need to delete all the layers that we published last time. I mean, we might not, but let's pretend we do. Um, and then we're going to place fake tiles on map, but the only thing we're going to do is buffer tile from latitude... Oh, 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 oh. I'm beginning to see why something went wrong. Latitude, longitude, and of course we need the distance parameter because um, I think it's called dist. Let's take a look here. And at some point I might just have to... Uh, unfortunately, by passing around objects, I do not make it super clear uh, exactly which parameters need to be passed. So um, for tile, I think that was the problem the whole time long. Buffer lib, the um, extra params, uh, longitude and latitude. And I do not think I even said, so where is dist coming from here? Um, okay. Oh, actually it's not because I actually have it here uh, hard-coded for right now. At some point we will, we will want to pass it. Um, so that should be okay. All right, so in index.html, we have all of this stuff. We have um, uh, remove all that. We don't need to set rect bounds. Of course, we don't need the commented stuff. And because we're not really, we're just testing, we don't need these comments either. So this is a pretty trivial 60 line script now. It won't work, but it'll help us deduct why it doesn't work. And one of the reasons it doesn't work, of course, is because uh, I don't know how to write JavaScript. So, you know, sorry about that. Um, apparently, we do have a syntax error here. Let's see if we can find it. Um, wow, I mean, we're just, unless it's in a in an included library, which it could be. Um, so 
So let's get rid of this real quick to see if it's an included library. Run. It is. So the problem is inside of an included library, almost definitely in BC Maps, because that's the one I just tweaked. Um, buffer tile, let's see. I might have started a function and not finished it or something. Okay. And again, sort of dreading the... Uh, Unhappy with myself that there is no, um, I'm happy with Replit that there is no sort of uh, function that, uh, that syntax checks, which seems to be a very basic thing to do. All right, well, I know the last function I wrote was uh, not place fake tiles on map, but rather buffer tile. So, once, <laughs> once again, at the very risk of doing something terrible, I'm going to X that out, see if that fixes things. Okay, that's... I thought we had this problem earlier, and I thought we fixed it. Um, and I think the... this... I think we figured out what I had an extra... but I could have sworn we, we fixed that. Uh, that we had an extra... an extra right brace. Console log I, J, if, then... Then end. That's end J. This is end I. And then the rest of this should be fine. Let's let's have it do the auto format. That could be helpful. So it does seem to recognize that as a, the auto format. Okay. I guess it should bother me that. Um, that this isn't working. All right, well, let's just time go all the way down to what we think is the end of the function, which is beyond what it thinks is the end of the function. And is that all of it? No, okay. So there, run. Okay, so it's not, it wasn't there. Well, okay, let's see if it's in the, um, blah, 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 these are comments, can't hurt us. Okay, let's see what the last function we wrote was. GC dist, I'm pretty sure is okay. X, Y, I think all of these functions should be okay unless I did something terrible. Now let me see if I can actually use this um, functionality here. Um, this doesn't actually uh, get rid of the lines, it just, it just elides them. Uh, but now I'm wondering if I can use comment region or something. Format document, format selection. Go to the. Don't really want to format. So okay. So where is comment? Uh, there might not be an option to comment out code, unfortunately. Pick definitions. Well, is it going to change all occurrences? Format command palette. Okay. Well. See if that's the one. Nope, that one's fine. So this makes it at least a little bit easier, I guess, to figure out what's wrong. Um, so I think we did that one. Now we're going to do buffer tile. Okay, and actually, let's see which one has like sort of a hanging definition, which is what is the which is going to be the problem. Uh, function that one. Okay, not that one. Not that one. And then it's got to be not this one either. Okay, so it's got to be something in another in another library. So this is actually. I wonder if I can also do that to the Java doc. Nice. Oh wait a minute! 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 Why is there a hanging thingy out here? That is not cool. Ah uh, well, let's delete it and see what happens. Yep, of course everything works. Now, there is no map being drawn, which is fine, because we're only drawing the buffer, which is, uh, which is apparently going to break everything. Okay. Not cool. Okay, now next, I'm going to have to stop this now, even though it claims it's already stopped. So this is uh, ugly debugging here. Here, wow. 
I don't think I'm doing that many console logs and so oh wow there it is okay um I guess computing 65,000 things does take a little bit uh, longer than one would expect so and this is the image and if everything goes well this should be like a white um, rectangle with a little tiny uh, red circle in it and as you can see right there there's no red circle okay so this is okay we're gonna we can actually deal with this because we want buffer tile um, and welcome to our one user who can remain an anonymous for now because you are not um, you have not said anything in chat so I assume you want well I will preserve your anonymity okay so the thing we're worried about here is it looks like um, image data count count so the um, we want to know if this thing here well actually we want to know if this thing here is called this is what actually puts a red uh, dot in the middle uh, puts a red dot at a given pixel in image data so let's go ahead and over here say bigger and we might as well say and let's go ahead and make this a template string i and j so we'll see where it's trying to paint things uh, red which should be within 5,000 miles of the equator Okay. and do we want to still log i and j eh, yeah, let's keep doing that so it's going to take a little bit of time here, go over here console's going to now freeze for a little bit this is uh, beginning to worry me in terms of how inefficient it is uh, we have to wait um, maybe I should have put a randomizer in front of that so it only prints i and j every so often uh, the ones for bigger I actually do want it to print every time so that is that is important for at least for right now okay so okay there we go image six five so that's how, that's good that's the correct size of the image over here, IJ, IJ, IJ. Now the problem what I'm seeing here is we're not seeing any place where the distance in miles is bigger than 5,000. And that is of some concern because there should be a place pretty close to the equator where it is within 5,000 is a pretty big number, so we should really have, have seen it by now. Okay. So let's fix this by only logging, let's say, let's say 10% of the time for right now. Um, and when we do that, let's also go ahead and give the dist in dist miles. Let's see if that number is actually doing something useful. Uh, or if it's, I don't think, obviously it's, I think it's not working because, okay, look over here, console log, math random is not a function. Really? Is it math? Oh, it's probably math random. All right, let's try that again. Look at the map. Wow, it's still being a little bit obnoxious here with the... Okay, good, that actually was okay. All right, so apparently the disk miles is constantly going to be not a number, which is will probably explain the problem we we're having of why nothing's happening. Although I thought I tested that before. This is called regression. Regression is when uh, adding a feature breaks two other features, or to be more accurate, adding a feature breaks another feature so let's see so GCD dist is being called with all this crap um, well we got GC dist right here let's see what it thinks it's getting I'm this close to fixing this function to just being a regular everyday function instead of this bullshit crap that we have here. Um, disk miles equal disk kilometers. So obviously none of these is being set, but let's see over here. And that's actually the whole object. And again, if it's math random, and this is not going to be linked to the other one. I mean, they'll both print out at random intervals, but different random intervals. Okay. 
see what this does. Look at the map. La 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 la. Go back over to the console. Um, disk, lat one, lon one, undefined. We had this problem earlier, and, um, and I think it might be because I did not compute. Let's go back to index.html real quick and see what I'm doing here. Um, ah, yes, because I am supposed to say LNG. There's even a thing in notes that tells me, don't use LON, use LNG. So now it will fail again, but again, maybe in a slightly better way. That's the Jeopardy theme. It's the back half of the Bennett Walls. Okay, so this is good. We actually have some stuff going on here. Um, oh, good. This this looks good. Now let's see if there's any place where it actually um, it actually tries to draw the red the red dot in maps, BC maps, this would be where it would say um, bigger. So what we're looking for is and that's actually smaller, but you know, whatever. So let's see where the distance is less than 5,000. I refuse to believe there's no point in this map that has a distance of less than 5,000, but that apparently appears to be the case. No. Um, so 128, 128, roughly speaking, is we're going to be very close to the equator. Let's see if we can go up there a little bit. Oh, there it is, bigger. 192.47. So, you know, the only thing that worries me here is I don't remember if image data is an array of arrays or if it's actually just a flat array that's four times the size of uh, four times the size of the image dimensions multiplied together. Uh, that is what's kind of bugging me right now. So, not a problem because we have a function earlier called buffer that I copied and pasted right here. Um, but unfortunately I think it uses another function called array to array to PNG, which we also have, so we're good. Um, let me see if I can find that. Array to PNG. So, let's see if we can find it. We do have it, have it defined somewhere. Don't have it defined here. Don't have it cut and pasted here anymore. Or if I do, I, I've lost it. Done over there. Okay, blah, 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 blah. All right, let's look for it over here in either BC staging or in... Um, and I think it's actually array to PNG. That's the call. That's the definition. Um, okay, so image data starts out being an array of uh, size of the pixel images, I think. Then we flatten it out. And now I'm beginning to wonder if um, what flat does. And I, I'm beginning to think this function might have been actually a good idea. And because now I'm just wondering if we're just basically adding one pixel at a time and this image data is, well, you know, one way to find out is to actually Google to see if it's a list of integers or it's a list of image data properties data one dimensional array containing the data in RGBA order between 0 and 255 inclusive so that's that's pretty definitive that's probably the mistake I've been making so over here um, we can't really we, what we really want to do here is hideous but we want to add basically four different things to this uh, array each time. And that's the red component, which is 255, the blue component, which is 0, the, uh, sorry, the green component, which is 0, the blue component, which is also 0. Let's not do that. And the opacity component, which is 255, which I think is the correct opacity. Um, and if that's not the case, we still need to do this. We just need to do it now with all zeros, because we cannot have a gap in the, um, in the array. 
So this this might have motivated why I wanted to do um, why I wanted to do things like uh, array to PNG. But this is instructive. Uh, so now this is going to fill up the image data. Uh, the image um, data data, I guess, is now going to be 65, 5, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 4. In other words, it's going to be 4 times bigger because we're using individual bytes. So let's watch this fail again. Result. Totally broken. Back to console. It's not going to work. Oh, that looks like a much better PNG file. Let's see if we can actually see it over here. Well, we cannot. So, but at least I think we have a PNG file now that is actually the, the correct PNG file. Uh, assuming we can actually capture the damn thing. Or if it's not the right thing, it's at least a much bigger PNG. So we have a different problem now, which is always good. So let's see what this looks like. That is it. That is beautiful. It is, of course, uh, the nation of Japan. Uh, not really, but that's what its thing looks like. Okay, so... Um, so then we basically just take this, slap it onto a canvas, uh, console log object ping, and then return the object. Um, and I think that's what's wrong with that is the create fake slippy tile function expects something a little bit different than a PNG. It expects, I think, uh, object image or something. Let's find out though. Um, overlay, overlay, overlay. URL. Um, URL equals object tile function XXYZ image overlay. Okay, that's a little weird because um, the way we have this working, uh, URL is just going to be the object itself. So this really should be, uh, the image is going to be url.png. Whoa, that was weird. Um, and I'm going to probably rewrite this whole thing, but... But... Because um, this is now getting really super ugly. And we do have some notes that will help us rewrite this in just a sec. Um... So, that's fine, but now the URL is no longer just the image, it's the whole thing, so what we actually want is url.png. Let's run that. Now there's actually a chance it'll work, so I'm scared. Um, it's frozen. Oh, damn, it worked. Okay, so there you have it, it's, it's working now. Uh, now, of course, the question is, well, you know, that's, that's pretty easy, can we change this to, like, 4,000 miles or something, and the answer is we could. We're not going to right now. This is a pretty good point. I'm going to go ahead and make a zip copy for myself, and I'm going to go ahead and push to GitHub, um, and I'm going to use an, try to use an on, honest... No, 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 don't do that. Uh, an honest message, which is... Um, got buffer tiles working. Okay. From here, we could go on to things like Vornoy and... Um, and, and other stuff like that, but I think I want to really clean this up a, a lot, actually, uh, including the names of the files. So, the very first thing we want to do is, given a map, we want to know what tiles are included. So right now we do all of this crap right here to get that. That is, uh, that is not necessarily ideal. So what we want to do is, um, given a map, which will have the ZX and Y, will have the Z zoom level, and the map extents in it, because um, those are properties of the map, the extents and the Z and the zoom level. We're going to try to get back um, the uh, X and Y ranges of tiles that are available, and we're going to try to make all these checks much cleaner than they are right now. Um, so that's that's what we're going to try to do here. And we're not, we're even do this correctly, so let's go ahead and create a new function. Let's create it at the very end. Okay. And we're even going to use the correct Java, uh, JavaScript. Um, given an object with the following fields... Oh, actually, let's say what the function does first. Um, 
given a map and a zoom level with a zoom level Z, because that's actually part of the map, uh, determine the X and Y ranges of tiles. So we won't have to give return every cross pair, we'll just say the X range is this, Y range is this. Of slippy tiles included in that map touched by that map, because we, we do allow uh, overlaps. Uh, and then we'll put in parentheses just to make it really clear, i.e. the slippy tiles we need to render. And of course, that's not going to matter if someone else is doing the rendering for us, but um, input object, and we're going to make the output object separate. Map, the leaflet map, um, and I want to avoid doing things like for which to compute. Um, so we're going to do this in the imperative sense. Compute XY computer. XY tile ranges for this map. Um, and the output object for right now will just be X range. The range of X tiles. Um, actually, do I want to do that? Let's see. Maybe. I want to kind of do X min, X max, so let's do that, yeah, X min, minimum X tile, value, X max, maximum X tile value, Y min, minimum Y tile value, and Y max, maximum Y tile value. Okay, so what are we doing here? Um, now, I tend to name my functions um, as in something, the number two representing the word two, something else. So what this thing does is it takes a map and it returns tile ranges. So the obvious name for this thing is function map to tile ranges. And I think the two actually, this is, in camel case, we do need to capitalize the T in tile. Takes an object. Okay, we're not going to be stupid here. We're going to use the formulas we already had. Um, so the first thing we need to do is get the map bounds, which are... I wish... See, with Emacs, you could just jump back and forth. Um, but here you can't. So let's see. Um, and I'm going to cheat and just copy all this crap here, but we're not going to use all this crap, obviously. Um... In fact, we're going to cut it down a lot, if possible. Okay, so... So the first... Whoa. So the first thing we have to do is get the... Uh, the so we have this map, which is OBJ map. Um, and we don't need any... Of the, a lot of this crap we don't need, of course. So here we have the get zoom and the get bounds which something tells me map bounds get north I mean in theory we should just be able to use get bounds we don't we shouldn't have to go through all this crap here um, so let's actually see what map bounds is I suspect uh, I suspect that map bounds is going to be... Uh, I think we've looked at it before and it's pretty ugly, which is why I wanted to break it out into um, north, south, east, and west. But it is a function, and I mean, if you know, if we're going to use the get bounds function... Um, oh, I see. We actually take map bounds and get the bounds from there. That actually might be correct. So let's not do this. Okay. And now I'm going to add some actual commentary inside the function, just just because I can do that. Get map zoom level and lat long boundaries. Okay. Um, do I want to do this? Okay. Compute. So what we're trying to do here is prevent the uh, boundaries from being something that can't be computed. Um, that goes off the edge of the, uh, of the, you know, that, that has a latitude higher than, 
90 or less than minus 90, blah, blah, blah. Or actually, in our case, minus 85 and plus 85 because we're Mercator. Um, limit boundaries, find boundaries, and limit to Mercator map. Seems like a reasonable thing to do. And then... And we do want to, at some point, maybe allow the eastern latitude to be bigger than, um, like, 180, because we're shifted over to the next sort of zoom level that we're looking right where the, um, you know, right near the international date line. We do want to allow that a little bit later on. But for right now, we're just going to say this is, um, th this is what the map boundaries are. And the way we could do that, by the way, is by using, like, a mod 360 or something. In fa or, I mean, a minus 180 or something. There are ways to do this. Okay. So now that we know what these are, we now need to compute. Um, well, <laughs> looks like we're going to do the whole thing, aren't we? Uh, we need to compute the northwest, uh, uh, the... Um, okay, we need to figure out... And I don't... Uh, we actually probably should use long lat to tile. So long lat to tile gives us the zoom level, the latitude and longitude, I don't think we need projection one anymore. Let me check. Uh, of course, there's no definition for that. Long left tile. Okay, well, this tells us this uses it, which is great. And again, a little bit of pain there from. Uh, Good, 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 good. Here it is. And let's see. Oh, this is actually a really nice thing. It returns a, it returns a new object. It doesn't tweak the original object. And it returns an X, Y, X and Y. Um, that's very nice. And I think because of the way we're doing this, it's, they can be fractional. And it actually might say that here. Um, and this is no longer true, this line 163 and 164, they can use it all they want. Oh, I'm sorry, this is long lat to image tile, we want long lat to tile, different. Um, converts the latitude, longitude to a slippy tile or an equi rectangular tile. We are going to break this, um, because we just, equi rectangular tiles are stupid. So the input object, we're going to actually fix this, I guess. Input object, the zoom value of the map, the latitude and the longitude, and the return value, uh, output object or return object, is going to be x, possibly fractional x value of tile y, possibly fractional, y value of tile. Okay. And we don't actually need to set any defaults here. Where'd I go? Ah, help me. Okay. Um, we don't need to set any defaults here because uh, we're just going to assume projection is Mercator. And so... I don't know why we need let y equals zero, but we do need a return object, which we will call... I'm wondering if we actually even need to do that. Hang on. This might not work, because I don't know if I can declare an object on the fly like this. Um, and you know, we're just going to say... And I don't think we're going to do error checking here, but we'll make a note that we won't. Note, no error checking. Uh, caller should error check. That's really saying the same thing. Okay. Freak rectangular, we don't care. This is, um... Oh, this is basically testing to see if the, um... If the latitude and longitude are out of range, which we will not be doing else Wow K 
Okay. And I'm going to get a little bit nastier here and actually say that all these sort of pure functions um, are going to be in radians. If people want to send them to us at um, as non-radians, um, they can convert them to radians on that side. So we're going to make this function a little bit purer. Uh, not tile, the, because it's not really tiles. Longitude and radians, latitude and radians. Uh, then what we get back is the x and y. Those have to be integers because that's how they just are, basically. Um, so somewhere in here... Um, think oh I probably should leave that in there and let's go ahead and uh, sorry some people are trying to message me on some messenger program I don't care about because you're more important to me zero streamers zero watchers viewers whatever the hell you call yourselves you're more important to me okay so I think this just becomes. So I'm not happy with it, and I, I will I will accept that I'm not happy with it. Uh, but we're since we're sending everything in radians, it's objlat plus one is objlat. We'll probably need to test this now. Math pi over two. So let's get rid of all this. So this is a much cleaner looking function, I mean, except for the comment where I say I'm not happy about stuff. But I'm not. So that is important. Reformat. Reformatting should not take that long. Wow, it really didn't like that. It didn't even run it. Okay, copied this formula from somewhere else. Ret y. Um, two object z times object lat minus object got to be that. Over 2 over math uh, plus pi over 2. Um, let's see. I think this is the same as the Glutermannian. So let's go ahead and quickly look at this page. It, math World is a great site to visit, by the way. Uh, so I have no qualms about visiting it right now. And I think they give a simpler function in terms of the good Armanian. Um, so let's see, the um, the inverse formulas are blah, 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 blah. Where GDY is the good, so this is the actual inverse good Armanian function. So what this is saying here is if we want Y, we can just take the logarithm of the tangent plus the secant. But I'm pretty sure that's gonna give us a number between zero and one. Uh, so we do need to adjust that a little bit because here the x value is just uh, uh, is just the uh, the difference of the, the latitudes. Um, where where lambda zero and that longitude is, so that's just going to give us a number between one and uh, let's see. Now I guess that that, that doesn't really matter. Uh, so longitude of the tangent plus the secant. Um, at zero degrees, that will be n undefined. Good. Um, inverse hyperbolic tangent. Okay, so maybe I had to use this formula. Am I using that formula? Let's see. Um, math tan plus one cosine. Um, Uh, that's probably this thing right here. Tan of pi over 4 plus 1 half. Um, yeah, that looks pretty strange. Um, log tan. That does not look that bad, actually. Logarithm of the tangent of... Oh, and I think I have to multiply this by something, because this could, will give me at zero uh, log of zero, which is undefined. That's not good. No, no. 
At zero, it'll give me uh, the tangent of pi over four plus zero. The uh, tangent of pi over four is uh, root two over two. The logarithm of that is something. At minus 90 degrees, this will actually give me uh, minus pi over two degrees. This will actually give me uh, the log logarithm of zero, which is a very large negative number. At the north pole, this will give me uh, the tangent of pi over two. All right, screw it. I'm gonna just assume this formula is correct. I don't know where I got it and I want to fix it, which is why I have a to-do in front of it. Okay, so then we just set the return y to this. Uh, we don't even need this anymore. And we're just gonna return uh, ret. Much simpler. It also breaks everything we've already done, but you know, whatever. Um, okay, cool. So we have this now and we're gonna use it now back in our BC maps to define whatever the hell we were defining, the, um, the, the new function we're defining, which is to uh, map to tile ranges. Just very good. Okay. So now, so the northwest corner will be the, uh, the, um, mm, you know, if we really wanted to be obnoxious here, this puts the north latitude between negative 85 and uh, positive 85. Uh, in other words, it puts it to where you could actually uh, sort of use... Yeah, long latitude. In fact, you could break that up into two functions because longitude and latitude uh, on a Mercator map don't depend on each other. They would in something like a Robinson projection, uh, but not, not, with a, um, not with a Mercator projection. So, let's see. Um, so this function actually remains pretty close to the way it used to be on uh, the northwest the northwest tile is going to be hmm yeah the northwest tile is going to be lat north longitude w projection we don't use anymore and what this is going to give us back is whoops this is going to give us back the um, the lowest x and y values. SE will be the highest x and y values. Okay. Go to this. So now the only issue we're going to have here is um, you can never have an, uh, a high value that is greater than the 2 to the power of, of the zoom level. If you do, it means you've got sort of a round off error going on. And let's go ahead and look at what, how we did that up here, and we'll just fix it down here, and it's not that difficult. We have a, a hack in here to do that for, uh, for place fake tiles on map, and that is um, so the cloud went off. We're going to get rid of it. Um, actually, we, we might not. Um, so let's see. Um, if the x coordinate is greater than, if the larger the x coordinates is greater than two to the z. Um, no, it's actually greater than or equal to. So actually, we can do this. Uh, we need a return, um, which we'll create as an object. This code's looking a lot better. I'm much happier with this code here. Well, actually, I think we can just create return on the fly. Um, no, I think in order to make a local variable, we actually have to do a let return. Otherwise, if there's a global ret, it'll override that. So it, let me go ahead and fix that over uh, here, too. Um, okay. Now we'll go back to PC Maps. Um, right, so our return value here is going to be uh, northwest the lowest. Okay. So uh, what we're going to say here is our return value x min 
we're going to bound the number um, you know I think we actually need to use floor functions here and stuff like that so the x min value is going to be northwest x because this is the least we're gonna we're gonna math floor it but that itself could lead to a problem because we it regardless of what the math floor ends up it has to be between 0 and 2 to the z minus 1 and I probably mean to say no that's fine because z is the object math that we do have z defined up here in line 323 okay so that's gonna be the uh, x uh, min value, the x max value is going to be we take the uh, ceiling of the eastern tile which in this case for us is going to be the southeast x value, it's the sex value that's right, got some dirty sex going on here um, and it's also got to be between 0 and 2 to the z minus 1 so if it's not we, we, we limit it to that now have I finished? yes I have okay y min is going to be I'm going to do a bound number here anyway because um, I don't think this will ever be an issue but whatever um, so the y min is going to be the uh, northwest y value and it's going to be the floor of that value because we need for partial tiles we need to cover the whole thing um, so that's the northwest y value the floor of that and again bounded to 2 between 0 and 2 to the z minus 1. And finally, the ret y max value is going to be bound number. There's probably a better way of doing this, but this is actually not bad. The southeast, the highest, the southernmost y ceiling, so we can get the whole tile, and as bound by between 0 and 2 to the z minus 1. And so this gives us integer values, uh, gives us the ranges that we need and it's, it's a relatively short function compared to the other ones we had okay, so let's go do that so this does not actually look too bad let me see if we can actually um, test it um, input object is just a map uh, let's see so we could go back here to index.html um, remove layers, add layers, and um, yeah, why don't we just console log uh, map to, wow, I hate when it doesn't catch my functions, map to tile ranges Um, of the map. Probably not going to work. Result. I have this. Let's see what this comes out as. Map to tile range not defined. Of course it's not defined. Because I said map to tile ranges. Someday I'm going to work on fixing it so I can call plural functions by, like, you know, aliasing this, which is not hard. But for right now I'm going to do it the right way and say map to tile ranges. I guess there's two ranges, x and y. Okay. Object map is undefined. Um, that's correct, because we need to pass it an object, not a not a map. So, and it turns out there, there's just one argument here, but sure. Pla, pla. Well, that is, that's the map being console log there, uh, which is not very interesting, by the way. Um, that didn't do what I was supposed to do. Let's maybe even go one step further here and just console log the map tiles. So this actually will not paint anything anywhere. It will literally just do the map to tile ranges. X min, X max, zero. 
That's probably not correct. Let's do a plus zoom to see what that does. Yeah, that's not looking too good. I guess we could also print out the map's zoom level, um, which is already known. But let's see what that does. So this would give us a zero for the zoom level. Yep, zero the zoom level. And the max and min tiles are zero. The y min and y max tiles should also be zero. Uh, the fact that they are not means something is wrong. So let's see what the um, lat north. So I'm looking at these lines here along west. Why is that to tile? Um, all right, so let's over here. See what northwest and southeast are. Um, so that didn't work. So let's see what. So long lat two tile is the one that is is messing us up here. Um, no, it's not. And here's why. Because of our wonderful friend, the degrees. Okay, so the problem here is, let's see, so blah, 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 blah. Um, the values in line 328 through 331 are in degrees. Uh, apparently, that's just the way map leaflet does it. You know, I'm not going to complain. Um, um, in degrees. So here, we need to say times... Wait, wait. Yeah, I don't want to say that. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to just do this and then make a note saying I'm not, I'm not happy about doing it. You know what, I think I can actually just do it as bclib.degree. That's not too bad. Uh, I don't want to put another math in there, but bclib.degree shouldn't be, should be handleable. So we're breaking out our functions here. What are we doing? Okay. Um, the other possibility here is... Yeah, let's do this. Let's actually modify the uh, the long lat to tile function to allow a uh, a third parameter called units. Um, and we're only going to handle two kinds right now. Okay, so long lat to tile. Fine definition. No, you won't be able to do that because you hate me. Okay. And what we're going to do here... Um, oh. Yeah, we need to... So the longitude is also in radians, so this function is no longer correct, actually. Um, so it's the object to longitude plus, when it, which is math pi. Which I think is that. Over math pi times 2. This is not a difficult function. Okay, so this puts the object longitude between, um, so it starts out being between negative pi and pi. This puts it between 0 and 2 pi. Now we just divide by 2 pi and then multiply by the uh, number of tiles at the zoom level, which is object z. Okay. So glad that actually would have never worked then, because we had one unit in degrees and one unit in radians. But now we have both units in radians, it's just fine. Um, okay. So now... I don't want to mess with the object itself, so let's do this. Um, uh, 
Let's... <sighs> yeah, let's do some temporary variables here. Let lat equals object lat. Let long equals object long. Um, so here we can just say L E and G and and uh, L A T instead of going through this sort of ugly obj lat. And the reason we want to do this is because we can now have a conditional, so we're not using obj lat anywhere else. Format, please. Thank you. And then we can say if obj if degrees you, uh, lat and long are in degrees. So we can probably fix that pretty easily. Um, if obj units equals degrees, and I think for job for string comparison you're supposed to use triple equal. And all we have to do here is lat times equals. Um, you know, this is not that hard to do, so I'm just going to say math pi over 180. That converts degrees to radians. And do the same thing here for uh, longitude. So then we have this in um, longitude and latitude. Then we can do this, return that. Looks good. If this works, I'm going to save it. Look at the empty map, go back here, x min, y min, y max, zero. Beautiful. Not very useful, but let's zoom in now a couple of times, see what happens. Um, zoom level two, zero to three, zero to three. So we're still looking at the whole world now, which I think is acceptable, um, because we still have a, so if we zoom in a lot now and sort of move around, now we will have a, a, a smaller area. Uh, zoom level five, 14 to 18, why I'm in 14. 14 to 18, 14 to 19, 14. let's change that a little bit. Let's make sure the x and y values are independent by moving this thing to the right, and the x values should get larger. Um, well, they did, they did. They went from 14 to 17 to 21, why I'm in from um, 14 to 18. So if we go up now, let's just do this a little bit more. We can now make the y values look uh, smaller, so we will know for sure something's happened. Yes, the y values are now 10 to 13. And now if we zoom out, um, we should be getting back the whole thing. Zoom level 3, no, not quite. We need to go one more. Two more. So now we're at zoom level 2, 0 to 3, 0 to 3, which is correct, because at zoom level 2 you can't go any further than that. And let's see if we can go a couple zoom levels in. We're now at the 0 at the zoom level which is why the minus got grayed out. Awesome! So it looks like this function is working and it's actually doing a fairly good job. Okay. So let's go back to... Let's go ahead and save this like I promised. I'm going to save it both with the uh, uh, download a zip and I'm going to save it using version control. Um, what did I change? Uh, fixed some functions. That's vague enough to be totally useless. Okay. All right, so now let's go back to our uh, BC maps. What, forget what, what I was doing here, but uh, map to tile ranges um, is working. That's fantastic. So now that we have map to tile ranges working, we're going to kind of rewrite this uh, place fake tiles on map. That's not really a really good name. Uh, what we actually want to do is say um, place computed, well, we don't even want to say place computed tiles on map. The next thing we sort of want to do um, let's see, we get the extents, we know which ones we're doing, and I guess this will be, um, yeah, I guess in this case we're actually going to have to put the, put the tiles on the map, because the first step is we have to basically compute the tile for each thing that's in the, within the extent, and then we'll get a PNG out of that, and there's really not much more we can do with the P, we could return an array of PNGs, I just don't think that's, uh, there's, we're adding too much to this function by doing that, so... Let's break more stuff by, okay, place computed slippy tiles on given map, 
Um, input object. And again, we're going to separate these out. Put the tiles here. Opacity. Do we care about opacity? I think we kind of have to. Um, the tile function. Um, extra parameters to pass to the tile function. Uh, the function that returns a PNG image of what URL to put in a given tile. That's the opacity, the map. Um, what else do we need? Extra params to the tile function. I'm not super happy with that, actually. I'm wondering if there's a way to have a... Um, I wonder if you can set, like, tile function to be a function call. I don't think you actually can. Um, I, I don't think you can say... Uh, I mean, you, you could, but it's going to evaluate to, uh, to a, a value, not to another function. Uh, this would be called, like, function currying. Let me see if JavaScript has it. I don't think it does. It does this would be actually pretty useful. Uh, currying in JavaScript. Take a brief look here. Oh wow. We'll build our own curry function shortly. So that's not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is this is what currying is. It basically, gives you takes a, a function of three arguments, converts it to a function of one argument, that takes two more arguments as function. Um, fortunately, spread operator... Uh, I don't know if we want to do all of this. This is fairly ugly. The nice thing is that we could pass a function. Um, we could, have, of course, create a function whose value is equal to fixed parameters for the first two for the first two parameters and calls a third parameter so we could do that without even doing this mess but even that's going to be pretty ugly so let's say place computed tiles let's see what are we getting and the reason we're going to say place here is because this isn't going to return anything this is going to just do the work uh, the tile function that returns the png image of the url of the given tile extra params extra parameters to pass to the tile function uh, output object, none. So we'll return like a nil from this. Okay, we don't need to do that. We don't need... Um, we might need this. Let's keep it for the moment. Uh, this is just a fancy way of saying if they don't give us an opacity, we'll set it equal to 1. Uh, get zoom, get bounds, which we don't think we need to do. Because now, see, all of this crap here, we've moved to another function. So what we want to say is let uh, bounds equal uh, map to tile ranges. Beautiful. And the tile, the uh, latitude and longitude here will be um, mm, will be the uh, map will be the m given map, and the zoom level will be the get zoom. So that should be pretty nice. Right. In fact, we're just doing this pretty much. Um, we don't need to do all of this. We don't need to do any of that anymore. So now we just go from x equals bounds dot x min bounds dot x max. Very nicely. Very clear. Very clean. And then y will go from bounds dot y min to bounds dot y max. And we'll say less than or equal just for convenience, but it's going to be an equal. Okay, so the first the thing we need to do now is we need to say tile to lawn lat, which we need to, we're going to fix that function. And what this is going to give us is it's going to give us the um, the top left corner of where to put the um, this tile. 
And since we know the tile is going to be 256 by 256, that's fine. So let's see. So what we need to do is we need to... So this is on a per tile basis, so we need to get the... T so let's actually say what this is. Top left corner of tile where to place tile image. Because we usually place it at the northwest corner. We place it... Images are placed... Uh, when they're placed, they go east and south. They don't go any other direction than east and south. Um, so let's do that. And I think I'm going to have to rewrite tile to lawn lat because it's a hideous mess right now. Um, and that's also not correct anymore. Okay, where the hell is Tiled Alon Lat? Well, somewhere. There it is. Um, yeah, and we are going to fix this. So it uh, converts a slippy tile to a latitude and longitude value. Um input object tile zoom value uh, and I think somewhere I actually went through and explained all of this but maybe fractional zero is left edge of tile 0 0.5 is leftmost pixel that's a little bit different because the pixels are the pixels have width so the middle of the leftmost pixel I should say here and that, that is important. It will become important, actually, in a minute. But, uh, uh, and so y will be the tile y value, maybe frictional, fractional. Zero equal, could be fictional, too. Um, top edge of tile, 0 0.5 equals middle of top pixel of tile, which is a little bit different. And projection we don't care about anymore. We're going to assume we're catered throughout. We can get rid of this. We can get rid of that. And we want to, and the return object, output object just to be consistent, will be the longitude in radians corresponding to x, y, to z, x, y. And that will be, of course, the latitude in radians corresponding or corresponding to x, z, x, y. So let's see if we can do this here. Um, and again, we do have to sort of define our return object, otherwise we will overwrite a global return object. Um, so this, this is the easy one. Return longitude is we just take the x value divided by this, 2 to the z, and then we multiply by 2 pi, and then we subtract. And now, for some reason, I thought it would be clever to do all of this stuff with um, west longitude and right longitude, but it is not. If we need the um, if we need the uh, right edge, we can just go to the next tile level up, and we don't need any of this. This is <laughs> hideous. Okay, well, probably is. Um, The object latitude is 180 over pi. That's oh, that is actually a conversion from degrees to uh, to radians. We won't do that because we are going to return radians. Okay, and we won't need to worry about this. And and we don't need to worry about this either, actually. So we can clean this up quite a bit here. Okay, the return latitude is... Don't do that. Um, two times... Okay, and this is in radians because we don't have the multiplication by 180 over pi anymore. And I'm just going to trust this is correct. It is, again, from this page here, where it says the inverse formulas are 
2 to the... Oh, this is where the Gudermannian function comes in. But I don't trust it because one other thing I have to do here is convert the uh, result between to between minus pi over 2, and actually that should be fine though, shouldn't it? Um, no, because the... Oh, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to leave it the way it is. Uh, at some point I might fix this function. It's not too bad the way it is, though. Okay, so that's what tile to lawn well, that does. It gives us back the... Uh, given the tile... Uh, Do I want to say tile x, y, z here, or even x, y, z to... What's the other function? Lon lat to... Um, the other function lon lat to x, y, or... Because if it is, we should probably be consistent. Um, to tile. Okay, so that's fine. So this really should be tile to lon lat. the reverse of the other function, kind of. Okay. Looks good. Let's format the puppy. This doesn't really format that well. Okay. Um, again, I'm going to do a little bit of a save here. I'm very paranoid. And this time I think I can actually be really c concise. Fix tile, too long, lap. Commit and push. Okie dokie. Let's go over here. Back to BC Maps. Um, place computer tiles on map. Okay, so now we have tile to long Latin. This is going to be in radians. And we will probably need to divide the result uh, by, by 180 over... We'll convert it. Um... Okay. So the uh, you so we're gonna call the tile function uh, with x, y, and z, which it needs. The don't think it actually needs the lawn lat, does it? Um, yeah, because it's gonna have to compute the lawn lat for every pixel anyway uh, in the tile. So we don't need to send it the lawn that that would be like one step it could save which is not enough to be useful. And then we'll send any extra parameters we need to the tile function. Okay. So what we get back from URL is, uh, what back we get back from tile func is going to be a bunch of stuff. Um, I think I'm okay with saying um, URL PNG. And then we take the, uh, the thing that we had here, um, Oh, you know what? We probably should, if we're going to do this, uh, tile to long lat, we should have an option for units degrees, just to be consistent. And so we can go back here. Um, obj units equal, equal degrees. Ret lat times equals, so this is radian, so we divide by pi and multiply by 180. Okay. Awesome. So then we can actually just say over here unit degrees, we don't have to convert anything. Uh, the tile function will give us back a PNG. Let's actually call... No, it'll give us back an object that happens to have... Um, tile function, yeah, that happens to have a PNG in it. I think I'm okay with calling that PNG. Let's call it URL. Um, and then we can say uh, the URL PNG file is overlaid on this little, um... Oh, here's why we did, had a problem. Um... So this is actually the, the tile's northwest longitude and latitude. And for the, um... southeast long latitude, 
really we just set x to x plus 1, y to y plus 1, and the zoom level doesn't change. And we still want degrees of force. Okay? So this is going to be the uh, northwest longitude latitudes uh, latitude, and the northwest longitudes longitude. And over here we will have the uh, southeast longitude latitudes. Did I actually have to make that camel case? Just did it. Longitude, latitude, longitude, latitude. Um, lat, and then the longitude of that as well. And unfortunately, I think that um, image overlay goes in latitude, longitude order, even though I prefer longitude, latitude order. Uh, but this is apparently going to be um, y, x. And I think that's just, a, that's just the way a leaflet wants to do it. I might be able to write a wrapper function around it. I'm not going to at the moment. So that will be the southeast to that. Opacity is the amount of opacity we want. Um, so I'm guessing the, uh, the, okay, so opacity is the opacity we want. And the tag, that, we need to worry about this, but let's see. Um, yeah. Yeah. Can we actually just use the ID of the object that's sent in? I wonder. Um, and we're not we're actually returning null, so that's not a huge deal. Um, so the, the issue is uh, when we create a new set of, basically when we do this, when we do the new image overlay, we have to get rid of the previous image overlay. And we... We have to find a way to keep track of the image that we're overlaying, which is overlay right now. Um, but I'm not exact, and we're not going to define what object overlays is. So I guess we could return... Uh, yeah, we could return the, the actual uh, overlay. Um, as an object. We, I mean, we add it to the map. In fact, we don't necessarily have to even add it to the map. Um, we can return it, and then they can add it to the map. Oh, 56 of one, 57 of the other. Uh, actually, let's just return the overlay. And the nice thing is they can send us an overlay to delete, uh, which is uh, something we, we would want to do um, before we... so. So, and again, I think we need to say uh, create ret as an object. And I will need to. Ch I will change what it what it returns here. Return ret, and that's the I loop. That's the X loop. And that is the the function end loop. Uh, so let's make sure we actually say in the documentation that the return object has the overlay, uh, but it doesn't actually overlay anything. So let's change this um, uh, compute. Let's see what am I doing here. Oh, actually, I can't necessarily do that because I'm going to do a whole bunch of them. So that's not cool. Um, yeah, in fact, you can't return in the middle of this function anyway. Okay. Hmm. Now, I guess I could. I guess I could return a list of the overlays. Um, And then, this is a little ugly. Um, so all of these would be overlays that will have actually not been added to the map yet. They'll just be a, an array of overlays. 
So let's go ahead and clean up the documentation here. Um, return image overlays for given map and tile computation function. Input object is the map um, return image overlay array. Let's return image overlay array. That's fine. That, that can be informal. Return image overlay array for this map. Um, I think I do have to, when I'm doing image overlay, I do have to define the opacity there, so yeah. Um, opacity of image overlays. Um, function returning, see we can abbreviate like crazy, PNG image URL of uh, image overlay contents, extra params, which is extra params to pass to tile func. Output object. And I think overlays is going to be an array. Overlays, an array of overlays to add to map. And the only thing I sort of want to see here is in the input object um, um, a list at an array of image layers. Now nah, you know what I think we'll just let the uh, the caller keep track of it for now. The, the, we need to basically uh, remove one set of image overlays before placing the next set of image overlays, which is why we need to keep track of the image overlays. Okay, so place computer tiles on map. Um, yeah, so the only thing that's actually going to be there is... Um, oh, that's not good. We shouldn't actually be doing that. This is just an overlay. It's not ret overlay. And then we push the overlay, and then we return it. And it's an array of overlays should be very nice. Um, I wonder if this is going to ding me for trying to push to an array that hasn't been defined yet. Um, if it does, we can we can fix this. So now it's totally broken. But let's see how what it looks like. That should not have worked, but it did. So that's good, I guess. Okay. So place computer tiles on map. This is a little bit ugly, but I don't think it's that bad. It's about 44 minus 18 plus 1 is 27 lines. Not too bad. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is... Um, the tile function... And the tile function is what will compute the the pixels for a given tile. And um, so a tile, anything can be a tile function, of course. So one of them, I guess, is going to be this, a buffer tile. And I think we just finished doing that one. Um, and we're going to need this. Okay. And I don't think we need to say X, Y, Z. This might be redundant. That's that's probably why I did that. Flip. Okay. So X, Y, Z to lat long, that's probably where I, I defined it. But this could just be, and looks nicer as, tile to long lat. Um, so the tile is fractional. And that's fine. So that gives us our longitude and latitude. Um, and here's where we need the extra params. Extra params, longitude, or latitude. So this is where we need to um, the GC distances. Oh, wait, that's actually we do. We are doing that. Okay. Um, probably don't need that anymore. And so, what else do we need for a buffer? Well, we need 
uh, color function, which tells us how to color the various distances. So here, and we have to decide what our color function is going to return. Um, I'm thinking an array of four elements. Okay. And we need to say that here. And do, did I call it color func or something stupid? I probably do. No, I did call it color function. Um, should return an array of four elements R, G, B, A. And then all we have to do here is, I wonder if you can add an array to an array. I mean, you, should, you should be able to, right? So we basically just need to take the image data array, data data array, this is an array, I think, and add to it four elements. Um, that does. And I think concat might be the magic here. Beautiful. Assuming that we can treat image data data uh, as an array. Concat? And do I want to do this? Is this the problem that I was having earlier that I'm... Mm, concat. And I don't like the fact that it wants a string. I'm hoping that in an array context it'll know what to do here. And so then we just call extra params dot co oh, yeah, mama. color function on dist. Um, that's pretty much it. Right. And then we create a canvas element. We set the height and width, which is, I think we decided up here, it's always going to be 256 for right now. Yep. Um, put the image data on there. I get the feeling we could do this in fewer steps. And now, as I promised earlier, we the return um, the data URL of the pink file. So that's the output object, and we again have to sort of declare it up here. Okay, we do not need a count function anymore. Go through it, find the latitude and longitude, find the um, Longitude and latitude of each pixel. Find the distance from whatever it is we're trying to find the distance from. Apply the color function to that distance. And then when we're all done with that, uh, create the PNG image. Um, let me make sure we're not defining object dot anywhere we don't want to be. So it's okay to use it as an input. That's fine, that's fine, fine, and that's not fine. So here we need to say return ping equals Okay, good deal. Now is the rest of this all crap? It is. Awesome. So that is cleaned up pretty nicely. Um Yeah, and I think I sort of screwed this up because longitude, latitude to XY uh, is going to be a uh, damn good question. Is it map? I don't think I said map, right? I hope not. No, long lat. So that's going to be long lat to tile instead of long lat to XYZ. Um, let's again quickly check this. So that should say Z tiled zoom volume. You give me the X, Y, and Z, and I will give you back the longitude and latitude. This says, give me the longitude and latitude, and I'll give you back the X, Y, Z. So that actually, it's not that function, it's a different function. Let's make sure we actually have it defined. So this gives you a. Um, 
Oh, this is wrong. Because actually it does take a third parameter, um, Z. Because the tile will depend, the XY tile will depend on the Z value. In theory, we could give it for like a whole bunch of Z values. That would be redundant, and I don't think it would add anything to the function. So this is long lat uh, Z to tile. We need the Z parameter in there. Um, okay, and then I think we can get rid of X long lat to Z to XY because I have now decided to call this stuff um, tiles. Blah, 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 blah. And I think I actually said all of this crap in the document. This is the function I was actually thinking about that I had forgotten about. Okay. And this, I think, is the reverse function that I'd also x, y, z to long lat, which is now tile to long lat. So again, this function is now superfluous. Um, let me see if I've added all this crap about uh, latitude, longitude, slippy tile. Yeah, let's go ahead and put this in here. Um, integer x is left edge of tile. Integer y is top edge of tile. Which is certainly the case. Um, let's go back over here. And this I don't think we actually need. This is not really part of the xyz to lat to long lat thing. Okay, given the distance between two geographical points, why am I saying in freaking degree? This again, we can fix this pretty easily. Um, latitude, longitude, the first point in radians. In radians. Return object, the distance in radians. And let's, let's see. I think we can uh, to do find much better. I did find a much better formula. Units, and I probably need to set a default here, but I don't really. Um, if degrees input is in degrees. Out units, if miles, return in miles. If km, return in K, I think we just say KM there. Uh, and the return object is distance in radians. And again, we'll just be very redundant here and say unless out units is set, in which case we uh, we return whatever they asked for. Okay, so now we can actually do this. This is hideous, isn't it? Um, and again, we need we we're going to separate our return object. So we do this. So return distance equals. Um, Now, I know I've had a lot of trouble with this, but I think it'll be easier because now we're just using times math cosine object lat 2 times the cosine of the difference of the longitudes. And an easy way to remember that is don't remember that. Okay. Latitude one, latitude two, cosine of the difference of the longitudes. I do need, I do need a big arc cosine in front of all this. Um, plus the product of the sine of the latitudes. So I think uh, that will be fine. Times math sign object latitude two. Okay. Um don't think we need to do that. So now we need to say if um ret units, which is input units, equal equal, equal degrees. 
Um, object latitude one. Yeah, this is kind of where I wish I could do a loop, but I can't because the variable names aren't the same. Or can I? In theory, I could just by looking at the. Um, because this is object, the same thing as object bracket lat1, but we're not going to do that. Alright, so if it's in degrees, we're going to multiply it by um, pi over 180. Okay. Do the same thing with the other three inputs that are in degrees. Okay, a little ugly, a little ugly. Um, and now, units equal equal miles um, that's actually kilometers. Uh, times the Earth's radius. I guess in this case I can't actually um, cheat, so I'm gonna have to do it this way. If the return out units is kilometers, uh, return distance is multiplied by this. Else if, I think that's correct, ret out units equal 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 miles. We might need to be less picky about how they spell miles, but let's times equals BC lib earth radius over 1.609344, which actually should be a constant, and I probably should have. And else, do nothing. Um, and then just return ret. Beautiful. What does this do? Map to tile rate. Good. This we actually wrote, so it's actually it's actually a nice helper function. Okay, so now the question is, um, well, we've probably broken everything because I've renamed all my functions and done all sorts of other terrible things, uh, which is okay because uh, we're going to fix it. Um, so let's just see what this breaks right away. Kind of annoys me that it doesn't break anything. Here we go. Long lat to tile is not defined. It is not defined because we now call it long lat because we do need a z value and I'm pretty sure we actually pass it. Whoa. One seventy eight. Yeah, because we actually do pass in z as a as a parameter, which we, we have to. Okay, let's run this. Watch it break. Wow, it did not break. That's amazing. I don't think it actually put a uh, little thingy in the middle, but you know, whatever. Okay, so now let's um, go back to index of HTML. Let's really get this going now. Um, so what I want to do here is call. done this before. We're going to make maps an array. Actually, it's going to be an associative array, which is an object. And we're going to say maps buffer. This looks stupid, but it's actually okay. Equal. Um, I think it's going to be just place computed tiles on map. Um, I'd be a little bit careful here. Place computed tiles on map. Okay. Um, mm. 
turning PNG image again. Okay. So we should be able to create a leaflet map with a tile function and create a color function for that tile function, which is not nearly as bad as it sounds, uh, or unless it is. Um, so let's see if we can do that from over here. So we have a um, maps buffer equals mm, okay, so the So this is going to be a map whose tile function will be buffer tile. And we will send to buffer tile the extra params of, let's be, Did buffer tile actually use ra radians and it probably should, hang on. So I think actually it does now. So buffer tile um GC dislike, okay. And that's also gonna be in radians. Um so w unless we say otherwise uh, the XYZ parameters of the tile, and it's going to tell you how does it? Okay, right, right. The extra params, latitude, longitude, by default, have to be in in radians because we don't say anything here about them being. Uh, we don't GC dist uses radians. We don't do anything about converting them unless we say so specifically, which we do not. So the extra parameters will be latitude of let's say. Right about where I live, which is, uh, do I want to say degree here? Yeah. Longitude of, let's say minus 1.56 times degree, color function, ramp. Um, okay. Um, and the update view function, I don't think this is going to do anything in a little bit, but we're going to try this anyway. Um, the update uh, function is going to basically say, we're going to uh, get the uh, image overlays from place computer tiles on map. So we will just put that in here. Let overlays equal place computer tile on map maps buffer. That's the object we're going to send it, which has all the stuff that it needs. And I think the only thing we're missing here now, um, and this doesn't do anything. The only thing we're missing now is the color function ramp, which I promised we would have, and I think we can uh, we can do that. And right now, I think uh, let's see. Um, be nice if we could send like to the uh, tile f to the um, the extra parameters to the tile function to say degrees or something that we we actually are passing latitude and longitude and degrees, or that we want um, the output value of the GCD dist function to be in miles because it is going to be sent to the color function. But we don't care for right now. Uh, and ramp is actually going to have to take just a number, I think. Or is it? Um, nope, I think you can take an object. Let's go back over here. Uh, color function will take... <laughs> the color function will take val of dist, and I think that's we don't necessarily want it to. We do want it to take an object. This lets, lets us gives us some flexibility if we ever want to change it. Um, so the color function will take an object. 
And actually, at that point, could we just put in the extra params as extra params? No, not to the color function. That'll be to the buffer tile function. So let's go back over here. And we're not going to document this because it's we, we need to be much more better about this, if that makes sense. Um, now we're dealing with radians here, so I'm going to just be kind of funky. If it's less than 0.5, return the array. This is the red array, and that is full opacity. I really want to be able to return a three element array and have it to decide that that is acceptable and add a zero to it for me, but let's not worry about that for right now. Um, if it's less than one region, which is by the way about 57 degrees, and notice this is a this condition will only be fired if the first one isn't. That should be green. Um, less than two. Yeah, let's make it blue. That rhymed. Um, and then if none of those conditions follow, we still have to return something because this expects a return value for everything. Let's do that. So now if this works, we should see like little sort of concentric circles and I will be very happy. And I'll be very surprised because it won't work. Missing semicolon before statement. That's really helpful. Oh, here we are. Oy vey. Let's maps. Let's maps, man. All right, let's see if that works. Degree is not defined. That I'm actually okay with. Um, all right, I said I was to keep it at VC lib degree, and I was okay with that. Clearly, this is not going to work. Good. And object map is undefined on place computed tiles on map. And that is correct because I did not specify that the map I want to put all this. Wait, do I care? Yes, I do, because it actually has to place the map somewhere. It can't just return a list of them. Or actually, it does return a list of them. Ah, but in order to know what to, um... Yeah, I think you, we still need to do the map extent, so we actually need to know what the actual map is that we're putting all this crap on. Stuff is broken, which is good. Z is not defined in place computed tiles on map. That's fine because that is coming in from the object. Wait, actually. Let bounds. Um, oh, you know what? I think... I mean, we, we may, it is, we know what it is, but let's go ahead and actually compute it separately just because we're going to use it more than once. Um, Do that here, and over here we'll just say ZZ, which sounds silly, unless you're ZZ top. Probably still sounds silly to them too. And then over here we can actually use Z as just Z without having to worry about recomputing it each time. So let's watch it break again. Good. Extra params is not defined at uh, libbc maps 89.7. Okay. Extra params color function. Um, so when I call buffer tile here, the tile function, um, I call it with the object's extra params. And I guess the object's extra params here. Uh, what do I call them? No, those are the extra params. Um, extra params is not defined. So do I mean object extra params or something? Did I screw that up? Nope, that's... Nope, it is object extra params color function. Swear to God. Break. 
image data data concat. Okay, so we kind of thought that might happen. Uh, image data data is apparently not an array, even though it sort of behaves like one. Um, <laughs> oh god, so I'm going to... Okay. This is one of those things where I'm just going to get it to work and I'm not happy about it, but, you know, whatever. Um, so, I, I don't know how we can assign to it as an array and it's not actually an array, but that's okay. And by color, this is actually just going to be an array of four elements. It's not really a color to that, to that, uh... Okay. And then we we're just going to say... Image, data... Set it and then increment it afterwards. This is just hideous. Color zero. God damn it. And this, I don't know why we have to do it this way, but it will, should work. I mean, it'll still break lots of other stuff, but this portion of it shall work now. Result, bear a message. SE long lat is not defined. Uh, place compute tiles on map. Did I mess up by not camel casing properly? This is debugging, man, the way God intended it. Ret overlays is undefined. Yes, and that is something I expected. I think we have to say... We have to define it because it's going to be a numerical array doesn't have to be, though. Oh, it didn't break. Okay, hang on, something's wrong. It didn't break. It's okay. It'll break in a sec. Panic! It didn't break! Fuck. Okay, and the reason it didn't work is actually okay, because over here I say um, that overlays equals place computed tile on Ooh, that doesn't actually do that though does it it actually just computes them but anyway so these are image overlays so I should just be able to do um, is this the best way to loop through an array? it's probably better ones um, overlays add to map. This better not work. Okay, good, it didn't. Um, okay. So we should be getting back because we're at the maximum zoom level out, we should actually just be like one overlay. Um, overlays. Yeah, that doesn't even make sense, does it? Overlays I at map. And you keep worrying it's actually going to work one day, and I'm going to be like, what the hell? All right. So we're going to, we've been going for, let's see, about um, some amount of time. Wow, for almost two hours. We're going to stop here in just a minute. Uh, I am going to see if I can get this overlay working, because if I can, it's it's really it's sort of a big deal. Uh, place computer down maps buffer. Um, no, because that is actually the whole object. What we want from it is over the overlays field. Albuquerque is actually up here somewhere. 
Okay. Still not working, still not getting any error messages though. So what I'm expecting here is an array of overlays. Of image overlays to be more specific. Let's do this. And do I have I forgotten to do my very first update view? I think so. Yes, I have. So we want to run it before we have anything else going on. Run. Immediate error. Can't access lexical de defini declaration maps before initialization. Um, update view at 57.5. Yeah, that would be kind of a bad thing to do. Updating the view before I tell it what, what, what's in the view. And let's see. 9,793rd time is a charm. Okay, so no image is being overlaid. That's, that's good, kind of. Um... This should be, I need to get rid of that last quote, this should be uh, a, like a blue and a red circle. Let's see what it actually is. Wow, it's taking time to load nothing. So I think it's pretty impressive. This is the, the URL is literally in the, um, no, hang on, that's what's wrong. Okay, so that didn't work. So let's see what's going on here. Bounds or southwest, blah 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 blah. So this is the um it is an array. The URL is this thing. Come on, behave. And I think this actually needs to be another equal sign here. It does and it's garbage. Okay, let's go over this too while we're at it. Hmm. Uh, image data data is a U. It is an array containing the data in the order uh, with integer values between 0 and 255 inclusive. So, image data height, image data width. Well, let's be careful here. We don't want to flood the. We don't want to spam the console a lot log. Um, Let overlay equals l image overlay. Let URL tile function equals that. So I guess what we could do here... Uh, it's looking pretty bad, though. It's looking like the object tile function is not doing what it's supposed to do. Um, and the object tile function here is um, buffer. Buffer tile. That's good. Um... Okay, got to be very careful here. Let's every so often see what color we're getting out of this, and it should not be always uh, zero. It should not always be the transparent color. Oh, whoa, 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 we already got that. Okay, so zero, 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 alpha. I get the feeling I'm looking at the wrong, um, I'm looking probably at dist instead of val, which is the thing that's being sent to me. So back over here. Yeah. Oh, there's a way to change all three of these at the, s oh, that's not how you do it. There's a way to change all three of these at the same time. Booyah! And let's watch it fail one more time. Come on, baby, screw up one more time. OK, 
Okay, good. Good, good. Now it's the uh, the returns are always alpha. It's going to be zero, zero, zero. Zero, 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 zero. Zero. Yep, that's probably not right. Um, so what's going on here? Let dist equals all this, and that should be between... Um, well, we're going to find out what it's between. Freaking piece of shit. And I don't even need to go to result now because I'm correct. Delete. That's not cool. Um, yeah, it's not cool. So GC dist is apparently getting something. Um, that it shouldn't be getting. Or it's just broken. Oh, is it actually, did I put that over here? There we are. Um, that one, that two. Yeah, that should be okay. Um, and the output units weren't even changing those. Um, okay, again, I'm going to be careful because we're going to call this function a whole bunch of times. And again, the amazing thing here is it takes longer to print these things than it does to actually compute them. It's, it's that fast uh, that we... Uh so tell us what you're getting as your input object here. Pure beta, lat one, lat zero. Um, not a number, not a number. And I think I know what's wrong because lat one and long one should actually be the latitude and longitude passed in from here. Um, And they're not called lat one and uh, they're not called lat one and long one. They're just called lat and long, which is actually correct. So let's go back up here to Mr. Buffer Tile. Uh, no, that actually looks okay. Got to be a little bit careful. We're still inside of a for loop here, so got to be a little bit careful. Um, so I guess the question is, what is object extra params long and lat before we enter this loop? So that's going to be console log gamma. That's going to be this before we enter the loop, just once. Let's take a look here. Uh, lat, not a number, lawn, not a number. Yeah, cool. Um, color function is a function. <laughs> nice. So I guess now we have to look back at where we pass it. Um, uh, wait a minute. So when we call buffer tile here, do we actually pass... Uh, let's see. Okay, so here we're passing the tile function extra parameters as were sent to us. Okay, so I think we might have like a, a nesting issue here. Uh, I'm running out of Greek letters. No, I'm not. I'm not running out of Greek letters. Unless I just did delta. No, I didn't. Um, let's see. See, this is... We're just tracing how far this actually got.
Delta, latitude, not a number, longitude, not a number. Color function made it right through. So... Extra params, and that is the... Um, Yeah, that's the input object param. So now, now I wonder if the, I forgot to define degree in the right place or something. Um, and I think, no, it should be fine though. bclib.degree should be right here in bclib staging. Unless I decided to make it bclib.mathdegree, which is going to annoy me. Uh, yeah, and I think I'm just going to go ahead and put that in here as well. Um, you can define it in two places, I don't care. And in theory, I could just make this a pointer to that, but I'm not that crazy. Okay. And let's hope it's not working. It's not working. I mean, I actually was kind of hoping it would work by then. But anyway, um... So now, good deal. Uh, the uh, the latitude and longitude are coming in correctly. Um, distance, distance, distance. Um, and I do need to make a fix to that because um, actually, you know, the distance should always be a positive number. Um, so let's go back over here. So the ramp function is being called, maybe, um, and it's always returning zero 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 zero, except it shouldn't be always doing that. For some reason, the distance is always less than one, which bugs me. Oh, there it is. Distance is greater than um, one point five five. Object val. Object val. Um, I'm oh, getting closer. So I guess epsilon if again because it's going to be called so many times we don't want to really print it every time. Console log epsilon comma Let's just print the whole object, although the only part we're going to use of it is the value. Um, it's epsilon our way in. And I might have to break my promise and actually um, not finish tonight. Value none. Distance whatever. Okay, so that's value's not being passed, and I think I know why, actually. Um, because... Uh, where do I call it from? Buffer tile's going to call this, right? GC dist. Um, yeah, because dist actually isn't going to return um, a, a pure number. It's going to return a, a thingy, which I think we need. The only thing we need from it is dist dist. That is brilliant. So... The value is dist dist. And now, I'm actually worried it's going to work. Fail one more time. Okay, good. Um, epsilon. Um, so this is getting alpha zero 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 zero. This is still not doing what I think it should be doing. They're not lined up. There should be more values of alpha. Hey, there it is. Alpha zero zero two fifty five. And then I think this PNG image actually looks a lot better uh, than it did before. It's, it's longer. And then that means the only problem we're having is the image overlay is not working, which I don't really care too much about. That's not hard to fix. 
Holy crap, this is a big frickin' PNG file. Do that. Shiny! That's exactly how it should look uh, on a Mercator map. Okay, so that's doing fine. So now, uh, before we call it, so let's go ahead and save this version. Um, and we will say that it is almost working. Um, image overlays almost working. Um, so now the only thing we have to worry about here is in index.html, excuse me, um, I'm in the wrong place. We need to look at update view. Um, we have this, uh, Overlays I. I always forget what comes after Epsilon. I'm just going to pretend it's UPS. The carrier, not Upsilon, the letter. Uh, so it's going to be I and Overlays I. And then if that's correct, we have to add... This might be the problem here. Yeah, let's not remove any layers right now. Maybe that's what's uh, making it unhappy. So run, run away. Of course you did. Um, oh. This is actually part of this. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, whoa, 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 let's pretend that we didn't see that. There we go. And there we have it, boys and girls. Now, if we zoom in, let's actually go ahead and make this nice and big now. If we zoom in, we shouldn't be getting pixelation, but we are, aren't we? Well, I'll actually give it a second to... Um, also, we can't move our mouse anymore. That's kind of a... And also, this is gone. So that's uh, that's kind of nice. Let's see what... Wow! Somehow we've really slowed this up, and it might just be because we're... Um, I don't actually know why that is. Uh, it might just be that it's a freaking pain in the ass to uh, compute all these points. Uh. Okay, so every time I move, I'm recomputing, which is probably unnecessary. Um, because I... Th eh, it actually might be necessary. Okay... This should not be this difficult. But I think I'm pretty happy with what we've done here. I am going to have it freeze my computer. That's that's step one. Um, then I'm going to... Yeah, this is... This is painfully slow, and I think it's maybe because of the computations. We will have to go... Well, we're going to close this off then. Save a zip, and we're going to get save it. Um, buffer finally working, but slow. So we might have to find a better way of doing that. Uh, as for now, I think we're going to call it. Thank you for watching the stream if you're watching it. Uh, and thank you for watching it on video if you're watching it on video. And if you're not watching it, thank you for not watching it, because it sucks. Goodbye. Oops, hang on, I actually need to quit OBS here, don't I? Stop streaming!